Hello friends and welcome to Edupedia World Videos. This is the course Linux Operating System Basics by Vagish Kumar and in this particular video we will be learning about Linux installation prerequisites. So in this video I will be telling you about what prerequisites you should have before starting the installation of a Linux system. So uh, the prerequisites in terms of resources that you require are you need either a computer system or a virtual machine. So for those of you who do not know what a virtual machine is, well a virtual machine is nothing but a emulation of a computer within your own Windows machine. So it is as its name suggests a virtual machine so it does not exist physically but it is a software which will just pretend to be a virtual machine inside your existing operating system. So when you will run that software, in that software you will be able to create a new virtual machine, new computer system which will virtually run on your system and you can there allocate the resources like RAM, you can allocate some RAM to it out of your own system's RAM, you can allocate some hard disk space and you can also allocate some processor speed for that particular virtual machine. Now, and when you will run that software and you will run that particular virtual machine, so that will start booting up and its small console window will appear on the screen. From there on you can do various things like you can mount an ISO image of a CD CD-ROM or a DVD-ROM to install some operating system on that or you can also use your physical uh, drive, optical drive that is installed on your computer to install the operating system on your virtual machine. So we will do all of this when we uh, come to the installation in our next video but till then let us learn about some more prerequisites that we have. Okay, so apart from computer system or virtual machine you need a Linux installation CD, DVD, USB or an ISO image. So any media that contains the installation image of your Linux operating system so you need that. So you can download it through internet okay so I ISO images of most of the Linux distributions which are free can be downloaded from internet or you can also uh, have the CDs so you, when you uh, go out in the market and you just search for Linux uh, magazines so a few of the magazines that are available in India are Linux for you and open source for you so with these kinds of magazines you will get some Linux distros on their every issue okay so with their every issue they give some CDs in which there are some Linux Im images available so you can take the image from there also Apart from that you need a, an internet connection but it will be required only if you want to install the latest updates on your Linux system or if you want to install any third party software or any software which is not bundled in your Linux distribution. Okay, so now at choosing the virtual machine, choosing the machine, so how to choose which particular machine to use. So you can install Linux on any available laptop or desktop that you intend to use for working on Linux. Okay, so uh, my idea is that we will be working on a virtual machine so that you don't have to uh, bother to acquire another system separately for learning Linux installation. But if you choose, you can install a Linux operating system on your same laptop or desktop, whatever you are working on, or you can have an additional laptop desktop for that and follow the same instructions that we follow over here you will just have to skip the virtual machine installation and configuration part okay so in case you do not want to use an additional machine or you do not have one you can install virtual machine host on your system this word host is by the companies one vm panel and you can also install the microsoft virtual pc and after installing this we will configure a virtual machine and then we can install linux over it so here in our tutorial we will be using the oracle's virtual box and the download link for oracle's virtual box has been given over here so it is this particular link that you can use to download the virtual box setup and after downloading it we will have to install it so in the next video we will learn how to install this virtual box setup and we'll also learn how to create a new virtual machine and configure it for using in our Linux installation. Okay, now we have 
arranged the machine now we need to choose the linux distribution or linux distro so the number of there are a number of linux distributions which are available in the market these days most of them are free to use and some popular ones include ubuntu mint os cent os and arc linux so ubuntu is a debian based linux mint is also a debian based linux and CentOS is an RPM or Red Hat based Linux. So what all these things are? Well, Debian is uh, or Red Hat is nothing but more or less they are the package managers. So they come from different communities, okay, and they use different types of packages for installation. But the Linux kernel inside the center, the core of the Linux operating system, which is the Linux kernel, remains the same for both of these. The only variations come in the types of software that are installed in this uh, system. The software that come bundled with your distribution and also some configurational changes are there which we'll learn further. Okay, So in our tu tutorial, in this particular tutorial, we will be using CentOS distribution uh, for the following reasons. Uh, one of the reason is that this CentOS distribution is the most stable Linux distribution available, one of the most stable distributions available and it is widely used in production systems. <coughs> so uh, over throughout the world you know there are a few distributions of operating systems which are widely used in the production systems. Why? Because they are very stable so they uh, are certified in a sense that they can work under high load, they can keep running on a particular system for years and years to come. So you don't have to reboot them time and again and problems do not occur so frequently in them. So CentOS is one of such distributions that is very stable. And it is also widely used in production systems. So whenever you probably you go on and uh, start ahead your career in uh, Linux administration or maybe a uh, programmer over Linux. So you will be finding CentOS distribution is used most of the times. Okay. To, do, to download this CentOS distribution for 64-bit machines or 32-bit machines for both you have different URLs that I have specified. So what is a 64-bit machine or a 32-bit machine? Well that depends on your CPU architecture. Most of the machines that are coming these days are 64-bit machines and uh, Intel Core i3, Core i5, Core i7, all these processors are 64-bit. So for these kind of machines, you should install 64-bit operating system, whereas for the older versions, older processors like Pentium 1, 2, 3, 4 and those on, you should download the 32-bit operating system. Okay, so the download links for both of these operating systems have been given over here and we are here downloading the CentOS version 7. Okay, so x86 underscore 64 is for the 64-bit OS, whereas i386 is for 32-bit OS. So I prefer that you use a 64-bit virtual machine and install this particular image from this website, CentOS website. If you have any troubles in copying this URL and writing it into your browser window, you can straight away search CentOS website. You can go to the centos.org website, go to the download page over there and you will all obviously be taken to the latest version download and from there you can choose the DVD ISO image to download. Okay, so choosing the Linux distro continued. So all distributions uh, use the same Linux kernel that we have already discussed. So most of the things in those uh, distributions are same. Okay, because the operating system is the same, so all the commands that you will run in one distro will be similar in the other distro and you can install any kind of GUI whereas these distributions come shipped with some uh, particular GUI natively so one distribution will come with genome uh, user interface, the other might come with a KDE user interface where Genome and KDE are different versions of Linux graphical user interface as we have also previously discussed that in Linux operating system uh, the graphical user interface also has various versions so it is not that just like Windows you have only one desktop so in Linux you can have various different types of desktops various different types of graphical interfaces 
so across the uh, various distributions these are different but you can install any other uh, UI if you want on any distribution Apart from that, something which is different is the configuration. So general configuration files like the network configuration and uh, the configuration for some of the programs uh, is also slightly different in these distributions. So and uh, the intended use is also different. Like we have earlier done the various versions we have seen that there is one Ubuntu, one is Mint OS, one is CentOS. So Mint OS is more popular among the home users. So those users which are not too much into learning the Linux technically, but they only only want to use Linux to be able to access their laptop and to be able to use the basic features like word editing and to watch movies and listen to music. So all these basic features can be uh, done more uh, efficiently on the Mint OS and more easily because they are already available over there. But when you choose a Linux distribution for a production environment or a workstation or a programming workstation, if you want to do your programming over Linux, you should choose some distribution like a CentOS because it comes with most of the development libraries and it is pretty standard over all uh, over the industry so most of the libraries will be ported easily to the CentOS and you will find no issues in installing various libraries on that okay so this is the intended use of your particular distribution which might be different for different distributions another difference is the bum bundle software so some distributions come bundled with some kind of software some come bundled with some other kind of software, some come bundled with the development libraries, some come bundled with the utilities, some come bundled with hacking tools and some with other sorts of tools. Okay, so deciding the partitioning layout, well this is very important because in Linux the partitions are not like Windows. Okay, so there are no drives like Windows, like in Windows we have C drive, D drive, in Linux it is not so. We have already discussed that partitions in Linux are mounted to various folders. Okay, so the file system is such that each and every thing, each and every drive is mounted to a particular folder and backslash like seen over here is the root folder. Okay, so like over here the backslash, single backslash is the root folder and it is it represents the root partition which is the parent folder or parent directory of all the other folders. So all the other folders reside inside the backslash which is the root directory. Okay, Various other partitions uh, can be there and these three partitions are mandatory. First is the root that we have already discussed which is the parent of all the other partitions. The second one is the boot. So you have to make a boot partition and this boot partition is basically where your initial part of your kernel code resides which gets loaded into your process uh, into your RAM while booting off your computer. Apart from that there is the swap partition. What is the swap partition? It is just uh, analogous to the uh, virtual memory uh, in your windows. You can have your virtual memory space for your over your hard disk. Similarly, in Linux also, that swap is used as a virtual memory and it, is, it resides over your hard disk, but you have to allocate a particular partition for that. And apart from that, these three mandatory partitions, there are some optional partitions, which is the root backslash root. So root is also the admin user inside Linux. So administrator in Linux, the user with administrator privileges is known as the root user and backslash root is the home directory for this particular root user. Then there is one directory known as slash home. So this can also be mounted to a, to a particular partition and uh, this directory is used as home for all the other users other than root. Okay. Then there is backslash opt, backslash etc, backslash usr and var etc. So rules for partitioning. First of all let us understand what these partitions all are about. We have already done that root backslash simple backslash it is also known as the root partition and it, to this partition you should allocate all the space that is left after creating the boot and the swap partition. Okay, So 
in case we do not create any other partitions, we create only the mandatory partitions. So you allocate all the space to root partition. All the space that is left after creating the boot and the swap partition. Okay. So for boot partition, you should generally take 250 to 500 MB of uh, space because that is sufficient for the initial code of the kernel to come in and sit over there and the bootloader to come in and sit over there. So it should be 250 to 500 MB of space for boot partition. Then for swap partition, the rule is a bit complex. If you have your, and it depends on the RAM, the size of the physical memory that is installed inside the computer determines that what amount of swap space you should allocate. So the rule says that for RAM, which is less than 4 GB. If less than 4 GB of RAM is installed on your computer, you should uh, use the swap space as 2 multiplied by RAM or twice the amount of RAM. So if your RAM is 2 GB, you should have 4 GB of swap space. Similarly, if your RAM is 3 GB, you should have 6 GB. And if your RAM is 4 GB, you should have 8 GB of swap space. So this rule is there for RAM, which is less than 4 GB. If your RAM is greater than or equal to 4 GB, your swap space should be constant at 8 GB. Well, when you search over the internet, you will find different versions of this rule. And this one is the uh, rule that I particularly prefer and found I found it to be good. So that is why I am using this one. And that is what I am mentioning over here. Apart from that, the other partitions uh, are also there, like the root. We have already discussed the uh, use of this root partition, which is the home directory of the admin. Then there is the etc partition, which generally holds the configurations. And there is USR or Unix system resources partition, which is used to store most of the source code of your system, including the source code of the kernel and the header files of the kernel. Then there is the var. Uh, partition which is used to store the logs and even the logs of your Linux operating system are created inside the var partition. So you can have some space allocated to these partitions also. So you can first you need to remember that boot has to be given at least 250 to 500 MB and maximum 500 MB of space. After that swap you have to calculate using this rule. So if your RAM is say 8 GB you will allocate 8 GB of swap. So boot plus swap is around 8.5 GB. Then the rest of the space you can divide among all these partitions root, backslash root, etc, usr, var. So in the mandatory conditions you need only three partitions to be created. All the other partitions, uh, all the other folders, they will not be actually mounted as partitions but they will be allocated some space within the root partition automatically. So you don't need to bother about them. Just create the three partitions. Okay, so we will learn this also and we will also create only these three partitions. So I hope that uh, this, these basic prerequisites of uh, installing Linux operating system were clear to you and uh, continue to watch the course Linux OS basics and thank you.